I found it interesting that you're doing Barrister and doing well with it. I think around 2006, 2007, I stopped working for Barrister because to me, they were just too much hassle for the money they were paying. This is Michael with Field Tech Academy, and today I'm excited to bring in Peter. He's out of Philadelphia, and he does a lot of service calls for Barrister. Barrister is a company that I have kind of walked away from a few years ago, but I found Peter on Reddit, and he's having success with Barrister, so I thought I would bring him on and share some of the information that he has to see if it's something that you guys might want to do yourselves. So Peter, welcome. Thank you. And I think it's cool what you're doing, trying to teach people. Is there a Barrister Reddit or are we just talking about the Field Nation Reddit? Field Nation Reddit seems to be the most active forum that seems to do the job. Like there's a decent amount of traffic in there yeah. for anybody who has questions or anything. All right. And I'll put a link in the description of the video. That Reddit group is really good about getting responses and answers fast. You get some guys on there that are real jerks. Um, so if you can wade through and find the, the good answers, it is a very useful tool. Yeah, that's, so that's what makes it a community, right? You got crazy people, you got all kinds of, one of the first things I want to say about Barrister is like this industry, if you let it, it'll just take every, like you need to, you're choosing to be self-advocate. I think, what was it last year? You made like $14,000 off of Barrister. It was 14 and change. Good to not all of that. Yeah, some of that was not me doing it, but sending technicians to go do it it's volume i mean the way you work with low margins is you do it in volume like you do a lot of it right i was trying to do i couldn't have done that many i don't take less than 50 dollars an hour from barrister like if it's a long job like eight 16 hours i'll drop to like 45 just because volume and i never take jobs or less than an anticipated three hours when i was doing it um Almost 10 years ago, we were doing uh, a lot of computer part swaps. That was their bread and butter. And so it was $45 to swap a part, the which, which yeah. for an individual might be okay. Have you had any of those offered to you? 45 you had a laptop. I did one. They always are trying to get you on those. Like, yeah. they want you to do those. They, so they'll send you on, like, a tour of laptop or, like, printer. I don't mess with any printer jobs. I've never, like, this whole year I did one laptop job because there was, like, six at the same site, and I think they did, like, 55 each. So you're actually, because I don't think Barrister really did this much um, years ago, so now you're actually getting hourly jobs what type of hourly jobs are they offering are they network related or what what type of stuff it's been well that's it's everything is up and down with them sometimes you're doing just tons and sometimes you're doing absolutely nothing but like so it's been uh, now was a low time it was a lot of home depot troubleshooting barrister is a scummy company like like i don't have a problem like taking from them because they will they'll send some poor guy two hours away and do a 45 hour like 45 dollar flat and it'll take them two hours like oh. No, like you don't deserve any. You're not treating people fairly because they don't. People don't know. So I guess that's kind of why we're here. Is like you can you can make money off them. And with this industry, I think, like you said earlier, you have to advocate for yourself. You have to protect yourself. You cannot assume that any buyer, any client is going to take care of you. And of course, I mean, the flip side of that is we as techs. I mean, we have to do a good job because if you do a poor job, then you have no argument to get extra money out of them. No, yeah, that's the secret. I have had zero failures with Barrister. So in the past, I had problems with them. The problem I had or the concern I had was that they would charge you the full price of a part if you don't return it, and that can be hundreds of dollars. Um, or if you showed up late, they would penalize you. Or if you didn't, I mean, they had just this litany of lists of penalties they would hit you with. Do they still do that? So I have gotten robbed by them. I have had jobs that took three hours and I only made 45 bucks. Like exactly what I was saying. Like they'll right. send they don't, and then they won't renegotiate. Once it's closed, it's closed. Like yeah. you're done. Now, I haven't got any of the fees. That's one of the trade offs. Like you have, there's really no reason why you like you'd fail something. Like, yeah, you're going to take a bath, but you're going to be there for hours when you thought it wasn't going to be that. But they still, in in theory, if you did mess up, they still do charge those those penalties and those fees. Yeah. But then, I mean, I don't know. Like, they do, they become the reason I was a part of the reason is because once you do enough, they become very, like, almost like, like, you know them all and they're all just struggling. And a lot of them don't care. Like, that's where a lot of the problems come from. It's like, eventually you can start doing things, like getting away with a lot more. They are strict. You build the bank of good faith. 
So what's the most, um, you know, for those that are watching that may not know anything about Barrister, what types of calls can you see from them? Anything. Like, oh, honestly, yeah. some of them, like, they send you, like, the funniest one ever. It was four days. And I was, they were like, we'll pay you, yeah, 50 an hour, four days. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. It was applying stickers to poles in a warehouse for four days. That was whole, like we, they were like we need yeah exactly yeah, we showed up I said no I didn't even go the first two days I sent other people and they're like dude like we're not this is nothing to do with IT I'm like well it pays good so just keep doing it right like, exactly that, I had to go do it the last two days it was horrible that always uh, cracks me up when guys complain they're like well, this is an IT and blah 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 you know I'm like man it pays us we can okay. do it. Just freaking go do it. Oh, because ego gets involved, right? It's like, I'm an IT guy. It's like, I don't know. I, everybody has their own. Like, I do. I'm not going to lie. But because I'm the owner, like, I can take, it's a lot easier for me to say, I don't care. It makes money. And a lot of them are fine. It's just, dude, the console monkey thing is real. Like, I don't like doing it. It's demeaning. It's like, oh, I'm just here to plug in a console and, like, watch you guys do it. Like, I get it. Console monkey. I like that. So obviously, if you're sending other people out to do some of the barrister jobs, do they require the people you send out to be W-2 employees or do they let you send 1099 contractors out? That's what they just don't care. Okay. Some of the higher end ones, HCDL, they're a global MSP. Every platform I'm on, I get and like they're just there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're routing tickets through Field Nation and Work Market and all that. Just like higher end, like clients who are going to ask questions. So, do you know some of these like stores you go to? It's like, what? Like, there's nobody cares. Like, you just right. walk in, hey, I'm the IT guy. And they're like, okay, just go into our thing. Well, and that's yeah. funny too, because I was curious, you know, I live in the Midwest. And so I feel like people are more trusting in the Midwest. I was curious, like in a city, you know, like in Philadelphia or whatever, I mean, do you get like, fingerprinted and blood tests and mother's birth name to be able to get to the network closet? Or are they pretty much trusting just because they know you're there to fix something? Yeah, too trusting. No, you need ID. Generally need ID, but it's, it's hilarious. I know. Like, you ever just, like, walk into something, like, hi, I'm the IT guy. And it's like, here, here's all of our critical infrastructure. Don't <laughs> yeah, be exactly. careful. Like, it's like, okay. Yeah, it amazes whatever. me the trust factor you get. Um it, what's funny is even on a retail place, you'll show up and half the time the client will not have told the site that we're coming. And so they're like, You're, we didn't know you were coming, but sure, here, here's our network closet. Here's all of our... <laughs> and it's nice to have that kind of trust factor. Well, so Peter, right. just so that people kind of have a perspective, um, what's your background and your experience? How long you've been with maybe Barrister, Field Nation, Work Market, things like that? Probably like two years now. And you're already having people come out and work for you. So that's that's good. And you also do some web design, some other things on the side to supplement income? Yeah, websites. I really like doing websites. Um, and yeah, honestly, I'm not on the market. It's like Barrister, they'll call me for the rest of my life, probably. Like, they are so just desperate because yeah. everybody hates them. And I try and I have the, uh, some good people I found on Field Nation who know me and just come to me directly and not on the markets. And so I'm not really in them that much. And yeah, down here in Philadelphia, it's so competitive. Yeah. So like on an average ticket, how many requests do you see that you're competing against? Over three hours or like three hours or more, over $35 an hour. It'll be 30 people easy yeah. on that ticket. It's like to beat out 30 people, that's, it's not... You can't really plan on doing that. Like it just, it'll happen. They're strict on the subcontractors. Build Nation is. And that's, I think, to protect themselves legally and insurance wise and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, it makes sense, but it, it makes it difficult when you're trying to grow a business and sub things out. It's hard to have them as employees instead of just easily 1099s. Yeah. And Barrister just didn't care. I don't know. I know this channel is for techs. But eventually, once you start techie logging up, you're going to inevitably ask, oh, what if I just had people do this for me and got paid? Like, because your value, you know, once you've learned the market, that's valuable. So you can turn it around and get other people to do it. One thing I found is that, as you know, like on Field Nation, Work Market and other places, that once you've built a relationship with a particular buyer and they know that you're going to show up with the right tools and that you know what a console cable is and you know what a crimper is. I mean, do you ever get those phone calls where they call? you and they're like they ask you these questions and what kind of people are applying for these jobs that you're asking me these questions i know i know <laughs> 
Peter's telling me he's got some really good rates and some really good understanding of what Barrister is willing to do. So I'm going to let him talk about that a little bit for you guys to kind of learn off of that. Yeah, so, I mean, disclaimer, they could be playing me as hard as I'm playing them, but, like, I've seen them desperate and, like, the max, so, like, worked it out. So, like, it's usually, yeah, if it's hourly, you can get 50. But that's why, like, this is so important because they'll offer you 20. Like, really? I mean, if you no, for the same exact job, they'll start at 25. Like, I've had them do that. I'm going to need them all the way up to 50. And that sounds absurd, but I don't know. They, they pay it. So that's hourly. Sometimes they'll try to knock you to 45, and sometimes they have to do 45. Like, they go. Because so the people you're talking to, they are, like, dispatch. They're just trying to fill right. tickets. Like, they call, and they just desperately want it done. They don't care. They'll say yeah. yes. They, it was up to them. It seems like they would say yes to any amount of money. Yeah, I'm sure they've got caps and in, in limitations for management of what they're allowed to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they get, and you have to negotiate. I can tell that they're, like, in a chat room with HCL. Like, it, like the speed at which stuff happens. Like they have to have really tied in. That there might be right negotiation with the customer. It might be totally in house. If it's hourly, forty five fifty. Do you laptops? You can do. Shoot, they never got seventy five. Fifty five was the highest I got. That's for that one. Like, and so yeah, I would have taken them more, but they they're always spread out. And you don't get any for travel. I haven't been able to get any for travel. I was at the beginning when I first started working for them. I had them like good, man. Like they'd give me fifty for travel and then manager. And so like they could be playing. They could have worked me down over time. First call I ever did for them, it was like two hours north of me where they paid. It was like seven hundred dollars to go fix this McDonald's. And like at the time, I was like still so starting. I was like seven hundred dollars in a night. Like, oh my God. I mean, that's not shabby for anybody for one day's worth of, you know, one ticket. So yeah. in terms of the types of calls you see from Barrister, obviously we talked, there's computer part swaps. Do they still do desktop and laptop? Part swaps, uh, servers. Or do they, I, they oh, servers, yeah. About, yeah, a lot of it is network troubleshooting. Like, and then the laptops, the part swaps. I haven't I've never done any sort of desktop part swap. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, so maybe, and again, it's been 10 years since I've worked with them. So maybe they've shifted and actually got higher level clients. Yeah, you know, the printer jobs. I've never done a printer job for them because I just like, I know some people. I mean, and that's the key, right? Is like get in and make friends with people. And they tell me, they're like, dude, some people out on printer jobs, they like, and it's, it'll be flat rate and then troubleshooting because like if you're not extremely familiar with printers and you don't know mm -hmm. like what it is based off the extremely limited description you know how many tickets i send you to you have absolutely like it's like network troubleshooting like that's the description right. that's like, so i'll do the same thing with printers like it's not printing right. okay well, that means, yeah <laughs> so you have to do a kit and you were on flat rate exactly and you'll eat it and then they say a lot of some texts will not reassemble the printer correctly they'll get billed for the print which is like a five thousand uh, dollar like dude you are i don't know enough about printers they've offered those for years i've always just stayed away from them because i don't feel like i could eyeball a printer and just assess it quickly to say okay i know that this is what's bad and get in and besides I'm, you're getting a 45 50 flat rate to me I have to be able to get that taken apart, put back together in an hour. That's not good value for me. And even laptops to me, I mean, if you're swapping a motherboard, sometimes those can take a long time. And so having a flat rate on that makes me nervous too. We're talking to a wide variety of guys on the channel. So a guy that's just starting out may be okay with making $50 an hour because again, he may be investing in learning and he's just happy to make, even if it turns out to be two hours, it's still 25 bucks an hour. And he's learning and getting better at working on laptops this can work for everybody i just i don't want to diminish the guys that are working for less oh my god yeah you gotta cut your teeth i always say right. that like you're gonna eat for a lot like a while anything to get your name out there i mean marketing costs money like expect it to cost money and it's like a general problem with everything is you want it like now like no it's gonna be a long road Everybody's at a different place. Some people work full time as field techs and some people are, you know, driving Uber on the side and uh, doing websites on the side, different things like that. How would yeah. you break down, you know, where's your current journey? Are you making most of your money off of contract work, um, off of like things like Barrister and Field Nation and that? Or are you making more money off of your other endeavors? Or? Yeah, I also have, I'm a W-2 two days a week at a local engineering company that's like their help desk guy. So I do that. I have websites. I do hosting. I sell hosting. And so that's really good recurring every month and then yeah the tech work i have funny nobody can make money off barrister because they were like a couple months this year we were doing good off barrister <laughs> like, that's awesome then i have yeah some other ones uh, from field nation that i still talk to and then 
but they're like odd jobs. I don't know. I network like weird computer things. I've kind of stepped away from that into more of a niche, like just websites. I don't like network systems. Well, we're not doing that. That's too much. I feel like when you're starting, you're just casting like a net. At least I was. It was like anything that pays, like right. in this type of direction, like IT. And then you just figure it out more than you go, oh, well, these, like, this is what I wanted to do. Like, let's limit. That's me. No, it's Barrister. You want to hear a Barrister call? Okay, go. Hello? Hello, Peter. Good day to you. It's me from Barrister Calling. Hey, yeah, what's up? I have a job for tomorrow. It's in Princeton, New Jersey. Yeah. It's a uh, layer troubleshooting, network troubleshooting. I suppose they have Cisco equipment. What, who is the customer? All right, the customer is British Telecom. Uh, is there any more detailed description of the problem? Well, uh, let me explain to you. The uh, tools that technicians should have. Travel license as a form of identification, mobile phone and charger, laptop with think you were installed, yeah. your console cable TV9, second one is the backup. Beauty, the application, uh, level of the equipment, uh, cabling to uh, times cat 5 e patch cable. Okay. And uh, engine take to the console cable. All right. Yeah, yeah, I know. But is there any more? Is it just network troubleshooting? It shows like this branch, US, it turns it down. Please send a field engineer for layer troubleshooting. It's all. Um, what's the rate? Uh, 45, 50, bro. It's like 45, between 45 and 50 between these two. And this is why I called it because uh, I wouldn't uh, dare to give it to somebody else this kind of job. But they want it tomorrow? Yes, sir. Yeah. You couldn't do it today, could you? Let me uh, wait. Hold on a second. Wait. Yeah. How ironic to get a pair of call while we're doing this. <laughs> I, know. Dude, I thought it was going to happen. I was like, I bet it will. <laughs> Because they call, they call a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for an answer. If you can do it today, right? Okay, you can call me back if you want. I'll be oh, back. yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you, brother. Oh, yeah. Sorry, caller. No problem. Bye. See, they're nice once you get to know. Them. There you go. Is that one of the yeah. guys you know? Yeah, I've talked to him a bunch. Yeah. That's awesome. See, and to me, I think relationship is key in this industry. Is learning your dispatchers, developing a relationship with them, because you know when you can put that human element in it, I think it helps for you to stand out from the other guys. Just go have fun with it. Everybody likes to have fun, right? So yeah. like you just talk to them like they're friends and you just whatever. You both need each other. Dispatch and you, they're kind of they're more valuable. They can fill tickets if they know who to call. They scalped me off Field Nation. I never even contacted them. I just got a call from one of them one day. And that, the McDonald's, they were like, we have a McDonald's job, it's by you, like go, we'll pay. We need somebody right now. So, Peter, I want to thank you for coming on the channel today. Um, what is it that you do that um, we can offer to the listeners that uh, might benefit you? So, yeah, if you need a website, I do good websites. Some of my clients and numbers are doing, they're doing so good. Like, we have good hosting infrastructure, Metal Lark IT. And I'll put a link to that in the description for everybody as well. If you need some website hosting or design, definitely call Peter. Thing. And I like tech work because it's kind of like a stepping stone. Like it's very easy to get into and then it has high limits. Like if you're driving an Uber, like you're driving an Uber, like that's the limit. If you learn how to take over like the contracting, like IT tech, like there's money there. Like I see, I've been seeing it's like, so I don't know, it's fun to see a game. Well, Peter, I appreciate you spending time with me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's cool what you're doing. All right, have a good one and good luck with that call today. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> If you got value out of this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you're informed every time I upload something new. Check out my website at fieldtechacademy.com. I have a lot of downloads available for those of you who are on Field Nation and Work Market to help you flesh out your profile and make them stronger. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you need a little bit of help to kind of get to the next level in your independent field tech journey, then I'm here to help. I also have a client list on my website that is available. Most everybody knows about Field Nation and Work Market, but there are a lot of clients out there with whom you can go direct. They will call you and email you before anybody else to give you an opportunity to do service calls. As always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.